So once more, I just want to welcome you to Jesus Strong Ministries, where we believe that we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. Amen. Amen. You listen, I don't know what you're, you're facing this morning, but I can tell you that you can do all things through Christ who gives you the strength. I don't know what you need to overcome this morning, but I can tell you that if you need to overcome depression, if you need to overcome fear, if you need to overcome witchcraft, the devil, anything God says, oh, glory to God. God says you can do all things through Christ who gives you the strength. How are you going to overcome it? Through Christ who gives you the strength. How are you going to face it? Through Christ who gives you the strength. Oh, glory to God. God, somebody needs strength this morning, God. Somebody needs encouragement. Somebody needs to be lifted up this morning. God, somebody needs to understand, Lord, that it is through your strength that they can overcome. It is through your strength, Lord God, that they can get up each day and keep on fighting the good fight of faith. Somebody needs a strengthening this morning, Lord. Strengthen them. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And so, ooh, Holy Spirit, I just love your presence, Holy Spirit. You know, I'm telling you, I speak, listen, if y'all are offended by tongues, you're in the wrong place because I'm in the place where God speak to me through, uh, 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 even as I'm speaking to you, uh, God is speaking to me. Ho is, the Holy Spirit is moving and I'm not ashamed to speak in tongues. Listen, I got it for a reason and I'm not about to hide it under any bushel. Uh, listen, when God gives you a gift, I am proud. I'm happy. I'm excited about any kind of gift that God has given me. And he has given me the gift of speaking in tongues. And the problem is some of us, we don't speak in tongues because we are, we are embarrassed by it. But listen, I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful for the people that follow me. I'm so grateful for the people that serve me because they are people that are not ashamed to speak in tongues. And listen, if you haven't speak, spoken in tongues, you're missing out. A great part of your life, your prayer life is missing out. So, so I just release the tongues, the heavenly tongues of the Holy Spirit over those who are desiring to be baptized with the Holy Spirit this morning in the name of Jesus. As they open up their hearts and their minds, Lord, fill them with your Holy Spirit, Lord God, because that's the only place where we can access the true strength of the living God. Oh, glory to God. Woo! Hallelujah, people get ready. But we're in for another great move of God this morning. God wants you to be encouraged. He wants you to be motivated to take some actions today. And, and, and I know that you've been in this rough season and it feels like joy is not coming. It seems like you, all, all you can see in front of you is just weeping. But I'm, I'm here to tell you this morning, I'm so excited because there's joy coming on the morning. It might You might be weeping right now, but there is joy coming. And your morning is just about dawning. It might look like it's still dark outside, but God is telling me to tell you this morning, it's about to be a dawning. Ooh, your breakthrough is at your door. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't give in. You are going to make it, sister. You are going to make it, brother. Don't quit. Listen, keep on doing what you're doing because it's going to pay off. Payday is coming, somebody. Today, I'm going to help you understand how you're going to be able to stand through these rough seasons and how you're going to overcome it. I know right now it seems like you're not overcoming it. It's getting the better of you, but I come to, I come with some good gospel news this morning because God is going to help somebody to overcome the thing that came to overcome them. Amen. Ooh, I'm excited. So, Ooh, before we break into it, though, I want to tell you that this is going to be the end of our fire sermon series. And I say that kind of melancholy because I enjoy those fire sermons. I have been uh, I, I, I have I've had the great privilege and honor to 
faithfully serve you in preaching and teaching to you, um, teaching you with the fire of God, teaching you about the fire of God, teaching you how to access and live in and embrace the fire of God. Because sometimes people uh, hear these fire messages and they tend to run away from the fire of God, but the fire of God is the only thing that is going to be able to preserve us, to refine us, to, to make us ready to meet the Lord. And so I have been in, in 20, this is my 21st fire sermon uh, since the start of the year it's, it's it's been a privilege it's been an honor to do this and um i can truly say that i was learning right along with you um i've been changed by it and i hope that you have been changed by these fire sermons too because uh God is when God does something like a move of, uh, like this, it is not so that we can be entertained or we can gain another piece of knowledge that we can throw in our knowledge bag and not do anything with it, especially fire. You can't go in the fire and come out the same way. So as I, I, I got ready to wrap up my my last one, I thought it was going to be last week um, when I uh, preached about the lake of fire. But um, the Lord put in my heart, he said, he, he said, uh, uh, go back one more time and tell them what it truly means to be a servant of God. So uh, to conclude our fire series, we're going to be talking about how to become a flame of fire. Oh, my God. Flame of fire, flame of fire. Somebody, you need to be set on fire today. If you have not yet been on fire, God is about to turn you into a flame of fire. Oh, God. Woo, shit to Robo Saya. So last week I told you we talked about the lake of fire and how it was the final judgment. And after the final judgment, those who are in Christ will get to live with him in the fire. And we expounded on the fact that our destination is fire, either to be with God, who is an unquenchable fire, or to be cast into the lake of fire. But what we didn't talk about is how, uh, uh, what we didn't talk about is how uh, are we going to be able to live in the lake of fire? I mean, in the in the unquenchable fire of God. How will we be changed in order to live in the fire of God? Because there are some things that needs to be done before we are able to live in that environment of the new heaven and the new earth. We we can't go there with this physical body. There we can't go there. With th this body has to be changed. So so we're gonna get some. We're gonna get a little bit deeper in in depth in, in trying to understand how God is going to change our bodies and how uh, 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 we're, we're to live while we're still on this earth. Because, you know, we understand that change has to come. And this is what we're all hoping for, hoping to achieve on that great day. We're hoping to get to that place where we're not thrown in the lake of fire with the devil and his angels. We want to get to the place where we are able to live in the fire or, or with the Lord. And so I want you to notice that from our previous topic, human spirit who disobeys God was tormented in the lake of fire. But notice that those who enter into the rest of the Lord, they, they don't have this problem. They entered into the fire. Remember, God is an unquenchable fire to live with God. You're going to be in an unquenchable fire. But the people that 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 knows God, they don't they don't have a problem of being uh, tormented in the fire. They are able to live, move, breathe, and walk in the fire of God. So my questions to you today is what happens to our body? What enables us to be able to live in that environment of fire? How does our body change? Why does it need to be changed? And so I'm going to go, ooh, shout out about Siam. What does it mean to be changed by the fire of God? And why does it need to be changed? And so that leads me to my text this morning of Revelation 22, 1 through 5. Revelation 22, 1 through 5. And Hebrews 1, 7. So we're going to, uh, we're, we're splicing two messages, two, two, two scriptures here to gain clarity on what it is that God is saying this morning. So let's read. And as usual, I'm reading from the NLT version. Then the angel showed me a river with the water of life, clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. It flowed down the center of the main street, 
On each side of the river grew a tree of life, bearing 12 crops of fruits. With a fresh crop every month, the leaves were used for medicine and to heal the nations. No longer will there be a curse upon anything, for the throne of God and of the Lamb will be there. And his servants, ooh, I love this, his servants will worship him, and they will see his face. Ooh, God, they will see his face, and his name will be written on their foreheads, and there will be no night, no need for lamps or sun, for the Lord God shall shine upon them. Ooh, God, that is glorious. And they will reign forever. And so I want you to see this. And his servants will worship him. And so I wanted to see what, what, it, what his servants look like in the earth. And so Hebrews 1, 7 says, no, about the angels, he makes his angels wins and his servants, his servants, his servants, he makes his servants flames of fire. And so that's where my topic comes from today, how God makes his servants flames of fire. And so we're going to look at what does it mean when the Bible says he makes his ministers, his servants, flames of fire. Why do I need to become a, a flame of fire? And so we're going to look at the steel making process to try to understand what is happening to our mortal bodies when we become flames of fire for the Lord. And so let me allow me to tell you a little bit about the steel making process and understand that I am not a steel maker. I've never been in a steel factory before, but that's what the Lord told me to use this morning. So I had to go look up the steel making process and try to understand what is going on. So if I misspoke anything on the steel making process, please forgive me. I'm not, I'm, my, my whole goal is to help you understand what is happening to you spiritually, how your bodies are being changed. Even right now, our bodies are being changed when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. Oh, glory to God. So if you understand something about the steel making process, you understand that a steel is made out of iron ore that, and carbon, but it takes a process to get the carbon into the iron to change the iron into steel. So it is made by melting the, the, the iron ore um, in a furnace or, or the, they use scrap steel now to recycle the steel. So it is melted in a furnace with other substance that introduce carbon into the mix and it is burned over 3000 degrees. Oh God. So iron ore, coke, coal, and limestone. These are the three things that are introduced into the, into the mixture when you're trying to create steel. So let's say that again, iron ore, coking coal, and limestone are added into the top of the blasting furnace while hot air is blown at the bottom of the furnace to drive this, this, this combustion process. And so as this iron ore and this mixture is melted, uh, um, the coking coal releases carbon into the product, into the molten product. Uh, and, 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 and so each one of these, these uh, 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 in, uh, ingredients, they have a specific function. So the iron ore melts and re, uh, the, cork, the coking coal reduces, uh, releases carbon into the product. And, 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 and that's what we need to change this, this, this iron ore from iron to steel. Then the limestone uh, fuses with the impurities to form a slag which separates the steel and it is removed. So this th there's impurities in there in, in this iron uh, melting big old melting thing that is melting uh, uh, iron ore, limestone, and coking coal to create steel. And so there, as, as with anything on this earth, there are impurities in it. So, so there, there has to be a way to remove the slag, the, the, the impurities. And so uh, this, is, this, this, this is a first stage because this is an intermediate, and it, this creates an intermediate product called pig iron. Listen, I don't know why they call this thing pig iron, but it's pig iron, uh, 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 the intermediate product. It's not steel yet, but it's not iron anymore. It is changed from iron, but it's not fully steel. So that's the, the intermediate product of uh, uh, producing steel. Now it's called pig iron. And it, is, it has to be sent into, the, into a different kind of furnace now to be turned into steel. 
And so I want to look at our uh, bodies, how our bodies change uh, as we go through the different changes in this world. So just like with the steel making process, um, we must understand that our bodies are going through changes and processes to, 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 to change us, to become flames of fire. Amen. Oh, glory to God. And so we're gonna we're gonna explain all this to you. We're gonna we're gonna tie this all together in just a minute. So my first question to you is: How does our bodies change? How do we change? Just like the iron ore is being uh, being changed into in, into steel, there is a change that is taking place inside of our bodies. Uh, if you remember the scripture, the Bible says that we are we are being changed into what we are beholding. So there is a change that is taking place in our body. It's not complete yet but there is something that is changed on the inside of us and so what is the agent what is the reagent that enables us enables this change on the inside of us what causes us to change from glory to glory what is the thing that we are looking into that is changing us what is that reagent what is that agent of change and Acts chapter one, let's go there. Acts chapter one, verse eight. And it says, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive power. Oh, 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 hold on there now. So I told you that the steel, the iron is not steel, but it is not, it, 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 it needs something to change it in order to become steel. And so that when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, he gives, he, he gives us power so that now the things that used to cause rust and decay in our lives is no longer of a threat to us because there's something that has been infused on the inside of us that gives us the power to withstand opposition because you got to understand about the steel and the iron the iron is something that easily rust and decay but when the, this uh, this iron is made into steel it is able to hold up megatons of uh, of pressure it can it, it is what we we use most frequently in our building projects all of these high rise buildings and and different uh, equipments are used steel is used to carry heavy load and bear forces that iron could not bear and so when we understand that the Holy Spirit is at work in us, you got to understand that the Holy Spirit is changing us. He's transforming us. He's helping us to become steel. He's giving us the, the, the power to withstand the opposition. He's giving us the power to deal with the enemy and the things that are coming against us. And one of the things that the enemy wants to do, he wants to keep us from understanding who we are, understanding the power of God that is at work in us. So let's break it down. Uh, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive power. Okay. Understand that there were three reagents that were added into the, into the furnace while the steel was making. Limestone coking coal and the iron, uh, iron ore. So the blood of Jesus and the Holy Spirit is, 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 the, is our reagent. And they are the only force that is capable of igniting the fire of God on the inside of us. And so the blood of Jesus acts as our limestone reagent. The Holy Spirit is the, is the carbon uh, 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 released from the coking coal. And the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus forms the slag in, in us and carries away our impurities. When the Holy Spirit comes upon us in this physical earthly realm, change begins to take place in our lives. This is evidence when we see people who are completely changed in the way they live. Listen, I know people who they used to live a certain way, but when the Holy Spirit comes upon them, they stop cussing, they stop womanizing, they stop smoking, they stop swearing, they stop wearing clothes that are 
demoralizing their bodies. They stop doing all the crazy things that people do because when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, there is something that changes on the inside of you. Oh my God, there's a change. I'm trying to tell somebody that there is a change that is coming this, this morning. There's a change that is coming. You won't live the way you used to live. You won't do the things that you used to do because when you have tasted and seen that God is good. Those things that have your attention, those things that, that have been drawing you away from the glory of God will no longer have any effect on you because you have tasted. This is why when Jesus was at the at the at, at, the, at the, the, the the wedding in the in, in Cana, they said you have saved the best wine for last. That you have saved the best wine for last because see, after you have tasted this kind of wine, you won't want any kind of wine anymore. you got to understand that the Holy Spirit in your life is a foretaste of the glory of what God wants to do in you. And it's only a foretaste because there's much more work to be done. There's much more change to be done inside of you. But right now at best, we are intermediate. We are between iron and steel. We're not being made into steel yet, but there's a deposit on the inside of us. The Holy Spirit is a deposit on what is to come in our lives. So at best, we are just pig iron right now. We're not iron, we're not steel, but we're in between. That's why we still suffer from pain. You got to understand something about this pig iron. Pig iron, it still has a, 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 some amount of carbon and some amount of impurities that are, are still inside of it that can cause decay. This, 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 uh, this pig iron is useless by, by itself. It, 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 it needs to go through further changes. And so when the Holy Spirit comes upon us and he, he creates this sort of intermediate body, we, well, our bodies are still subjected to decay. Our bodies are still subjected to, to death. Our bodies are still subjected to sickness and disease. And so although we have the Holy Spirit, there's still something that can cause us to, to, to decay. There, we, we can trip up. We can lose our way because we're, we're still not completed yet. And that's why Paul, the apostle said that this thing that we have is a foretaste of the glory that is to come, but the full glory has not yet come. And so we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to complete that work that he has begun in us. We need the Holy Spirit to prepare us for the great day of when our bodies will be totally transformed into the image of God. And the way I see it, I see it like this. I see the work of the Holy Spirit as like Haggai. Haggai, uh, 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 the, the eunuch that prepared Esther to meet with the king. Haggai um, was, he has, he, you got to understand about this eunuch. Um, he has foreknowledge about the king. He knows what the king likes and dislikes. So his job was to guide all these princesses that were coming, well, these are virgin people that were coming in to, to, to meet with the king and to see if they're going to become the next queen. So basically they were going through an audition process and, and the eunuch, he is the one, uh, he knows exactly what the king is looking for. And so he was guiding Esther. He's like, Esther, you look like what the king was looking is looking for. There was something about Esther. And uh, so the, the, the preparation process began and the Lord gave, gave Esther favor with this eunuch and the eunuch continued to work on Esther and prepare her. But Esther had to, had to be yielded. Esther had to yield to the, the, the preparation process. She had to allow this eunuch who was more familiar with this king to tell her what to do and how to do it and when to do it so that when she meet with the king of kings uh, uh, and the Lord of lords, oh God, we will be able to stand before him because see, you thought Esther was just preparing to meet with the earthly king. And yes, she was. But in, in essence, we are preparing to meet with the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And the only one that can prepare us for to meet with the king of kings and the Lord of lords is the Holy Spirit. Oh, my God. Because the work of the Holy Spirit is to prepare us to become flames of fire before the Lord. 
And you got to understand something about this preparation process. It takes a while because you see, God does not just change us all at once. He, the Bible says he takes us from glory to glory because we couldn't handle it if we were to change all at once. It would be too much for us. And that's why you got to understand with the steel making process as these iron ores are introduced into this furnace and the limestone and the coking coal and all these, in, th these things that are introduced into this furnace. It takes a while for all the, the, the iron to be melted and all the, 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 the impurities to form and, uh, uh, and, and, and be uh, separated from the, the, the true metal. And so everything takes a time. It takes a process. And so if God is going to take us from glory to glory, we got to understand that we can't compare ourselves to other people because you got to understand even in the steel industry, if you were to go to a steel plant, you will see steel that was already completed and went through the fire and they're neatly stacked and ready for shipment to wherever they're going to be used. And then you will see uh, uh, rusted metals or, or, or iron or, or ore coming from the ground. And then you will see uh, 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 iron ore that is in the fire. And so you're going to see steel in every different kind of stages. And so when you compare yourself to people who have already been in the fire, who have already gone through the process you're doing yourself a disservice you've got to understand that god is create is taking you from glory to glory he's creating in you a clean heart he's renewing a right spirit within you he's allowing you to go through the furnace he's allowing you to go through the refiner's fire so that you can be tried so that you can come out as pure gold glory to god for let's go to romans 8 Verse 16, because you need to understand what is happening in your body. For his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. Romans 8, verse 16. And so just like in the furnace of steel making, the two spirits are coming together to create something new. Oh, sha da da ba da 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 Oh, God. They are coming together to create something new. This preparation process, it might take a while, but like I said, the spirit, the Holy Spirit is joining with your spirit to affirm you as sons and daughters of God. But uh, uh, even as you have received, this is this is this this is the seal that Revelation talk about. Those who have the seal of God, the seal of God on people is the is the Holy Spirit. So you could say, understand that the steel, the intermediate steel product, the pig iron thing, it, it, it has the seal of the carbon on the inside of it, but it's not fully formed into steel yet. So so you you got to understand that those other iron ores, they 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 can't become steel until they go through the process that the pig iron has gone through. And so now uh, when, when God comes to take us into that final furnace, it's going to be and the, he, he's not going to take up the raw material. He's going to take up the pig iron, the intermediate uh, 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 product, the product that has, has the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, has the seal of the Holy Spirit, the, the, the ones that have been washed in the blood of Jesus, that the impurities have been taken out of them. And so those are the ones that he desired to make flames of fire. Oh, glory to God. Those are the ones that are going to become flames of fire. And so I want you to understand the, the, the process that is behind this, this change that is taking place in your body right now. Listen, there is, there is spiritual change on, on the inside of, uh, of somebody who has received the, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we take it as, oh, oh, we got the Holy Spirit so we can speak in tongues and we can do all this. We can bob our heads and shake our shoulders and do all these crazy things. Yes, that, that's part of being baptized in the, the Holy Spirit. That's part of being led by the Spirit. But you gotta understand that when you are baptized, in the Holy Spirit, your physical body has been changed. There is change. You see how your mind has been renewed. You see how you don't do the things that you don't you used to do anymore. But you don't see there is certain features of a person. I mean, somebody some people sometimes people have said, you know, people have looked at other people's face and said, Oh, you're glowing. You're glowing. What is that glow that I see on your face? 
And I liken this to like when a, a woman is pregnant. And when a woman is pregnant, sometimes, you know, there's a season that they, they, they have that glow that, you know, people call it that pregnancy glow. And so it's the same thing. Your body is being changed. Um, you know, when a woman is pregnant and a, 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 a baby is, is conceived and being developed in the womb, there's a, there's a certain glow that comes over them. But, but, but I want you to understand even deeper what is happening with, the, with this pregnant woman. When the Holy Spirit comes upon us, we become impregnated with the seed of eternity. But we do not give birth until the day we are changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. We are filled with the spirit, but just like the pregnant women, there are tremendous changes that are taking place in our bodies. Just like that pregnant woman, we can have miscarriages, we can have abortions and the likes. So, so, so we got to understand how to guard what God has placed on the inside of us. Because you have to understand that when you are pregnant with something, it, it, it takes a, it goes through a process. It takes a while for, for you to see what is going on. What are you, what are you, be, what are you creating? What is your body creating? You know, the, the, the woman's body changed, but most importantly, there's something that is being birthed out of that body. And so when you are, when you are filled with the, with the spirit, the Bible says, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power. You're, you're about to give birth to a new body. That's why Jesus said, you must, you, you know, what is born of the flesh is flesh, but what is born of the spirit is spirit because God is intending for us to be born of the spirit. We must be born of the water. We must be born of the blood. We must be born of the spirit. And what happens? Your natural body, your natural features begin to change. Listen, sometimes I look at some people's face and I can see there is a, sometimes you can see demonic presence on people's face. Their face is so contorted. Their faces, you look in the face of somebody and there's just an evilness or there's just a, sometimes it's not even evilness, but it's, it's like an oppression. I remember one day I walked into an office at work one, a, a while back and I, I into an office and I saw this woman and her face just, I mean, this is the saddest face I have ever seen in my entire life. Just sadness. And I'm like, Jesus, what happened? Did her son die? Her cat die? What? I've never seen a sadness like that in my life. And so that's what I'm trying to tell you that the spirit that comes on the inside of you, it changes you. I, I imagine if this woman that I'm talking about would have ever received the Holy Spirit, I can tell you that there would be a change. There, you can look at people's face and see so much joy in their face, so much pleasantness in their face because they have been somewhere with God. And I, that has happened to me several times where I remember seeing this woman. I, I was at a church one time and I see this woman across the room, far away from me. And I was, as she was walking, coming to me, I just see this, this, this glow of this, 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 this happiness, this joy, this peace. And I, and I just heard the Holy Spirit said, she has been somewhere with God. There's a change that takes place into your natural bodies when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Oh God. And so I want to ask you, why do our bodies change? Why is it necessary for our bodies to change? Can't God just take us with the body that he gave us? No. And so let's go look at it in Genesis chapter 3, verse 24. I'm going to understand why, why God really wants to change us. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 24, he drove Adam out of the garden. And I'm going to kind of read in my, you know, paraphrasing as I go along. He drove Adam out of the garden and stationed cherubims on the east side of the garden along with a whirling sword of, of flame to guard the way to the tree of life, okay? So there's a, there's a whirling sword of flame to guard the way to the tree of life. There's fire guarding the way to the tree of life. Oh, that's, that's a problem there because I can't, get into the, I can't get to the tree of life if there is fire. Mm -hmm. Can't get there, okay, all right? So let's go back to our text now. Revelation 22, verse 1 through, 1 through 4, but I've been looking at verse 2. I'm breaking it up. And he showed me a pure river of, of, the wa of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and to uh, 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 the throne of God and, uh, and of the Lamb. And in the middle of its streets and on either side of the river was the tree of life. What? 
Hold on, hold on, hold on. So wait a minute. The tree of life is now with God. And what we are trying to get back to is the tree of life. And with, oh, so how do we, okay. First of all, in Genesis, it told us, it told us that there's a flaming sword of fire that is guarding the way to the tree of life. And now in Revelation 22, where his servants are, his servants are with him now in Revelation 22. That no, they, there is a tree of life which is bearing fruits, each tree yielding its, its fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Okay, okay, so now I understand that if I'm ever going to get back to the tree of life, my body must be changed because a fiery sword is separating us from God. But his desire is to bring us back to the tree of life. But you can't get there unless you go through fire. Oh my God, this makes so much sense because if, because sin separates us from God. Sin caused a fiery sword to separate us from God. It, 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 there's a fire, there's a dividing line of fire between us and God because of sin. Because you got to understand fire is the thing that purifies. And without us being purified, there is no way that we can go before God. There is no way that we can gain access to the tree of life. So God, so God has to make his ministers flames of fire so that we can access God, so that we can go through the fire. Oh my God. God, somebody, you need to catch this right now, that how good God is, how great God is. God says, I want you back for myself. I created you for myself, but this problem of sin has separated you from me. And instead of me letting you go and letting sin have its way in you, I have created a way for you to get back through me. But oh, shut it up, so to it. But you got to understand, you got to go through the fire because because the fire is the only thing that has the ability to purify you. The fire is the only thing that has the ability to make you holy. Oh, God. For in order to be with me, you got to be holy. You got to be holy. Sin is the thing that is separating you from the tree of life. And I, I, I created the tree of life for you. That's what the Lord is saying this morning. He said, I created a tree of life for you. I want you to have life and I want you to have it more abundantly. But the problem is sin creates a separation. Sin creates a problem. I don't want you to eat from, from the tree of life and live in eternal damnation. I want you to eat. I want you to come in through the fire. I want you to go through persecutions. I want you to go through trials and, and tribulation. I want you to mortify the deeds of the flesh. I want you to kill sin. Oh God, so that you can reign with me, so that you can eat from the tree of life. Kill, crucify, burn up the flesh. Oh God Almighty. We still have a sin problem. So I told you that we're in this stage, we're like pig iron and we're still susceptible to, to rust and corrosion because we've not yet been made into steel. We're not iron yet, but we're not steel either. And so God has to introduce something into the mixture to enable us to become steel. God needs to put us back into the furnace in order for us to become steel. He needs to take us back to the fire and that won't happen right now in our state on this earth. We are just pig iron. We're not, we're not steel yet. We won't become steel until that great day when God, when, when we receive our sanctified, glorified bodies. Oh, shout out about Messiah. Oh, mm. he needs to get you back. God needs to get you back to the tree of life, but we must go through the fire. But the problem is if we go through the fire in the current state that we are in, we're going to be consumed. We're going to be burned to a crisp because see, we're not worthy to go through the fire by ourselves. We need some limestone. We need some coking coal in our fire in order to turn us into steel. We need the blood of Jesus. We need the Holy Spirit. 
to go into this fire because if we were to go in it by ourselves, we would be completely consumed. There would be no way to get back to God. Oh God. So God said, I want to get the steel making process going. I got to introduce the Holy Spirit to them. I got to introduce the blood of Jesus to them. I got to introduce the way that I've made for them to become the flames of fire that I intended for them to be. Because you got to understand, you cannot stand before me and serve me if you are not a flame of fire. Because I am an all-consuming fire. I live in fire. I am fire. And I will never be quenched. So therefore, in order for my servants to serve me, they have to become flames of fire. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. And sometimes we think that when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, it is just so that we can sit around and have a great day and so that we can rejoice and have great parties. But the Holy Spirit, you know, when the Holy Spirit comes upon us and we become flames of fire, now we begin to, he, he, he begin to enable us to do the work in the kingdom, work in the earth. We got to work in it. We got to live in nowhere, living in a heavenly kingdom, doing an earthly work. And so that's why Jesus talked about those greater, greater works than these will you do. The work that you will do that is greater, it can't be done in our physical bodies. Our physical bodies are not capable of doing the work of God. That's why we need the Holy Spirit on our body to enable us to go through all kinds of trials and tribulation, to go through all kinds of opposition, to go through all of the all kinds of demonic attacks and to come out, take a licking and come out ticking. God is working in us and he's doing a work of fire because he's trying to transform us into flames of fire. He's trying to get us to a place where when we work for the Lord, it is not so cumbersome. It is not so painful. He's trying to tell you that anyone who believes in, in Jesus Christ can do the same works that he did, but you got to do it through the Holy Spirit. What are those greater works that Jesus is talking about? Many people believe that the greater works are limited to the earth realm. But I want you to understand that we're going to an eternal kingdom to do eternal king, eternal things. Yes, we are ministers of salvation in the earth, but we are also going to judge angels, the Bible says which is just the beginning of things that we will do in eternity. We have an eternity to do many eternal things. The Bible did not reveal to us all the things that we will do in eternity. It just gives us some of the, it just gives us a, a, a glimpse, an insight into, into, into eternity. We, we have an eternity to do eternal things, to do greater works. The greater works that we're going to do, it don't, don't fool yourself in thinking that your little physical body can do anything greater than what Jesus has done in the earth. The only greater work that you're going to do is in, in and through the Holy Spirit working in you. And this is what 1 Corinthians 6, 2 verse 3 says, 2 to 3 says, 1 Corinthians 6, 2 to 3 it says, do, don't you realize that someday we believers will judge the world? Since you are going to judge the world, can't you decide even these little things amongst yourself? Do you not realize that we will judge angels? What? We will judge angels. So God is saying that, you know, you got to submit yourself to the change of the, of the Holy Spirit because the, the flesh suit, this flesh suit, this physical body, it cannot do those things. The, frankly, this flesh, flesh suit is inadequate to even preach the gospel. It's inadequate to even tell people about the love of God. I know people who want, you want to tell them about the love of God, but there's, you, your flesh is not allowing you because you're thinking, oh, oh God, what if they talk about me? What if they say, oh, I'm a holy roller? What if they say all you talk about is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus? Jesus, 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 those, those Jesus freak people. What, what, what? And so our flesh is standing in the way of, in, of adequately proclaiming the word of God. And so you need the Holy Spirit to be a witness to somebody else. It is only when this flesh suit is powered by the Holy Spirit, oh God, that we are able to do anything 
for God. And so if you don't learn anything from this message today, I want you to learn to understand that you need to submit your body, submit your flesh to the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit so that your bodies can be changed into the living flame of fire that God intends for you to be. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Woo. <clears throat> and I know as we're waiting for this new body, listen, I told you that we're still in between. We're not completely changed yet. We're going from glory to glory. And this is what Paul, the apostle said, and we're going to stay in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15 for a little bit. 1 Corinthians 15. Let's go to 39 through 40. And then we're going to go to some other verses in there. But I want you to understand that we're confidently waiting for God to do something. So listen, 1 Corinthians 15, 39. Similarly, there are different kinds of flesh. One kind of human, another for animal, another for, for birds, another for fish. There are also bodies in the heavens and bodies in the earth. The glory of the heavenly bodies is different from the glory of the earthly bodies. And so that's what I'm talking about. The glory that we're going to get in this physical body, that this body is going to be changed into, it's going to be different from this earthly body. There's going to be, a, you know, Jesus is our prime example. He had a different body when he came out of the grave. And we know that he, that body he ate with the disciples, he, 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 uh, he appeared to them from behind uh, closed doors. He came in. So this body, it's a real body, but, but it can go through things. This, this kind of body, it goes through physical things. It, 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 it's a spiritual body, but it, it can manifest into the, into the physical world. And so uh, this kind of body, uh, uh, we don't know. Like the person, the person right here is saying, we don't know what that body is going to be like. But all we know is that it's going to be different. It's going to be different from this earthly body. This earthly body is just a robe of flesh. Oh, my God. Woo, Jesus. It's just a robe of flesh. And then uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 44, it says, there, they are buried as natural human bodies, but they will be raised as spiritual bodies. For just as there are natural bodies, there are also spiritual bodies. So see, I'm telling you, there is a spiritual body that God desires to give you. But you got to go through the, 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 the process that God sets out before you. And so uh, he said, in, it go to verse 50, 50 and 55. I told you we're going to read a couple of this verse. I really wish I could read the entire thing for you. Verse 15, 50 through 55, he says, what I'm, what I'm saying, dear brothers and sisters, is that your physical bodies cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Here it is. He's bringing it down to us. He said, your physical bodies cannot inherit the kingdom of God. You know, we spend so much time taking care of this body, but we don't concern ourselves with the spiritual body that, that God is building up on the inside of us. And that's the reason for my message today. I don't, God don't mind you taking care of your physical body you're supposed to take care of it it's his temple but the fist but the spiritual body is you have to invest in that you have to make sure that you're spending time preparing your physical your spiritual body to meet with the lord the holy spirit is your guide through all of that and so uh very uh back to the first corinthians it says these dying bodies cannot inherit what will last forever Oh, God, these dying bodies cannot inherit eternal life. But let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. We will not all die, but we will be transformed. It will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye, when the last trumpet is blown. Oh, God, when will it happen? In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, in the blink of an eye, when the last trumpet is blown. That's when we will get the full uh, 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 body that, that see that that's when that pig iron will be transformed into steel. That's when now we will receive the full spiritual body. So if you're trying to understand why you are going through suffering while you are still while you are still saved, you're still sanctified, you're still filled with the Holy Ghost. You still got to understand that you are living in the earthly body. You are not in the spiritual body. 
ready yet. Yes, there's coming a time when we're going to be free from all of that, all of the sickness, all of the disease, all of death, hell and the grave. It won't hold us anymore, but that is not yet. It says when the last trumpet is blown. For when the trumpet sounds, those who died will be raised, will be raised to life, and we who are living will also be transformed. How, what, a, what, a, what, what does that mean? Well, our, our bodies are going to be transformed into the steel. The pig iron that is in the earth is going to be transformed now. For our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. Then our dying bodies bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die. This scripture is now fulfilled that death is swallowed up in victory. And oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, God. Oh, God. You see, our body has to be transformed so that death has no power over it. Death will have no power over this new body. And this is why I'm trying to tell you this morning that God is telling me to tell you that you need to focus on your new body, focus on your relationship with God, because you really want to get to a place where your new bodies will never die and it will never suffer sickness or pain anymore. That's what Revelation 22 verse 3 and 5 says, uh, um, there shall be no more curse but the throne of God and of the lamb shall be in it and the servants shall serve him and they shall see his face and his name shall be on their foreheads. They, we are going to see the face of God. We are going to see the face of God. Therefore, God says, I need to transform you. I need to change you into my image. I need to make you some flames of fire this morning. Oh, Lord of Osa, no lamp or sun or light for God gives them light light. God is the one that is going to give us life and light and we shall reign with him forever. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to reign with the Lord. I'm ready to drop this robe of flesh. Oh God, the old song says this robe of flesh, I will drop and rise to seize the everlasting prize and shout while passing through the air. Farewell. Farewell, sweet hour of prayer. See those old songs, they have so much power and so much anointing in them because the, those people, they understand, those people who wrote those songs, they understood that there's a spiritual body and this, this fleshly body that we are always so worried about where we paint it up, you know, we paint it up, we pluck it out and then we fix, we paint it in and we try to fix it and we try to shape it, we try to put all kinds and we want people to look at, look at me, see me, oh, I look good. Oh, Yeah. That, that fleshly suit is not going nowhere. You can't take it nowhere. And God says we've been focusing too much on the physical body and we, we have not been focusing on preparing our bodies to meet with him. We gotta give way to the Holy Spirit because you gotta understand that when we're born of the spirit, we're born like babies and we need the sincere milk of the word of God to, to nurture us up, to mature us. But there comes a time where we gotta stop drinking milk and we start eat, we have to start eating meat. And that's that is, that is the reason why this change that I'm telling you about, it, the, the, the Bible says it happened in a moment, in the blink of an eye. But guess what? It can't happen if we were not prepared. It can't happen if we were not ready. It can't happen if we were like those foolish virgins who didn't have their lamps trimmed with oil. Oh my God. Could it be that the Lord is telling somebody, you got, when he's talking about having your lamps trimmed with oil, it's, uh, it's already been formed into pig iron is already being formed in the process and be ready to cast into the in, in, into the steel making furnace because see the, those those uh, those unprepared iron they didn't have time to get into the furnace to be prepared but those intermediate iron ore that is steel that is not steel but it's not iron those were ready to be cast into the second fire to be to be made into steel oh my god god is saying to somebody focus 
focus and getting your body ready to come and meet me. Focus and getting your body ready to go through the fire. Oh my God. Shaman, what kind of fire you're talking about? I'm talking about tribulations. I'm talking about trials. I'm talking about persecutions. I'm tra- talking about opposition. When the devil comes at you one way, you got to have the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. Oh, glory to God. You got to have Jesus on the inside so that when the devil come up against you one way, you say not today, devil, not no day. You can't come up in here because I got something on the inside of me. Oh, Jesus. I got a body that says sickness and disease. You can't prosper in this body because the Holy Ghost lives here. Oh, my God. I got a body. I got a body that says to death, to hell, to the grave. You can't prosper in here because I got a Holy Ghost on the inside of me. I've been changed. I've been transformed. I'm on my way to glory. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, God. And so we're that intermediate product. We're still being formed, we're still being fashioned, we're still being made holy, we're still being made righteous. This is what Romans 8, 23 says. It says, and we believe also, even though we have the Holy Spirit as a foretaste of future glory, for we long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering. So we even the apostle was saying, although we have the foretaste of glory, although we have uh, 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 the Holy Spirit on the inside of us, we are waiting with eager hope, eager expectation for the day when God will give us full rights as this is adopted children, including the new bodies. Look at this, including the new bodies that he has promised us. My God, my God. Mm. If there's ever an incentive to serve God, this is it. This is it. God is saying that he promised us a new body and the down payment on that new body is the, is the foretaste of the Holy Spirit. Is that, is, is that pig iron that you're now transformed into and you are waiting for that day when that new body is, be, it, 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 it is fully formed on t- in you. You see, you got to understand that Pentecost was only the first fruits, the intermediate stay is still. It, it, it is the intermediate product. But, oh my God, but it had to happen that way because you had to go through the intermediate stages. And so right now, where we are in prophecy, where we are in human history, where we are in in the grand scheme of things, is that we are in that intermediate stage. And the only thing that we're waiting for in order to become still is is, is for Jesus to sound that trumpet, is for that last trumpet to sound. And then we can be caught up to meet him in the air. Oh God, and then the dead in Christ will be rise. Oh God, to meet him in the air but Paul said listen it's a great mystery because we're not going to all be sleeping we're not going to all be sleeping because in that moment in that twinkling of eye in that blink of an eye when the last trumpet is sound uh, oh God the dead is going to rise and they are going to reap incorruptible incorruptibility and we sh- and, and, and we're going to be changed okay we're, the incorruption is going to the, 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 the corruption uh, corruptible is going to put on incorruption and this this mortal is going to put on immortality and then so shall we ever be with the lord but this new body that Christ is is, is trying to get to us is not going to happen until it's not going to fully form until that last day when that last trumpet is sound and since we're in that I already told you we are in that intermediate stage. The only thing we are waiting for now is for the trumpet of God, the sound. But my question to you, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? You see, many people 
are saying that the sons of God are going to be revealed in the earth. And yes, the sons of God are going to be revealed in the earth, but you got to understand who the body, the sons of God, we are like that pig iron. It, you know, so we're going to be, re, uh, when all creation is groaning for the manifestations of the sons of God, when I just told you, when they will be revealed, they will be revealed on that last day when the trumpet sound. They will be revealed. And that's why the Bible says, who are they? Who are they? Who are they? Let's see. He says, who are they? The sons of God are those who are led by the spirit of God. Because the Bible says, as many as are led by the spirit, he gave them the power to become the sons of God. And so uh, you got to question yourself today. Am I a son of God? Am I a daughter of God? And so how, how do you be, become sons of God? How do you become changed? How do you get this new body? You see, you got to change. You got you got to allow the Holy Spirit to come upon you. You got to be led by the Holy Spirit. And even some of us who are in Christian Dome, we, we, we need to allow, we need to give more room to the Holy Spirit in our lives. We need to back off of a certain things. You know how, you know, sometimes we used to go head and head and neck and neck with somebody who was coming against us with some opposing views. Listen, drop it and let the Holy Spirit deal with it. Like, I don't need to cuss you. I don't need to fight you. Let, the, let God deal with it. And sometimes some situations you might be dealing with your finances and, and you're, 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 you're trying to do it in the flesh. Back off and let the Holy Spirit deal with it. Bring it to God in prayer and say, God, I have this need. I need this. I need that. And let the Holy, and, dr- and don't be anxious. Drop it. You know, how are we? I'm, I'm just trying to tell you how to be led by the Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit lead you in all things. Even the areas that you don't think that the Holy Spirit is concerned in your life, give him room. Give him room. Because there's a future unveiling, you know, much like the birthing of a child that, that, is, that is going to, to, to complete what God is doing on the inside of you. But it can't take place until you give the Holy Spirit room to nurture you and grow you up in the, in, in the Lord. Because see, the first stage is to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. But then you have to begin to drink the milk of the word and you got to eat the meat of the word. And then you now have to become parents in the spirit. So there's much to do before we're able to, before that glorified body is going to be revealed in us. And notice that this change only comes when we get to be with the Lord. You know, that's why sometimes we're trying to live like Christ in the flesh, lay body. And, and, and we can't understand why we, we trip up. In Romans 7, um, the Apostle Paul said, there are two natures that are still at work in me. When I would do good, evil presents itself. And so I see a lot of people that are, that are tripping up because of this. They, they just feel like they can't live the Christian life good enough for it, for it to be perfect before God. And God says, listen, I'm not looking for good enough. I'm, I gave you good enough. The Holy Spirit is good enough. Jesus is good enough. My God. Oh, God. I remember when I was going through something and I had messed up so bad and I had cussed out somebody and I I just wanted, I I said, God, you can't use me no more. You can't use me no more because I cussed out these people and, 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 and I was in a state of depression. I was just putting the cups over my head and Jesus came up under the, under the cover and he said, I, and, and I look at his face. I saw a vision of him and I'm sitting up on a park bench across from him and he's looking into my eyes and I'm looking into those eyes. And, and he said to me, I said to him, Jesus, you can't use me no more. Nothing good is, is in me. And I was crying and he looked back at me and he said, I know, but I am in you and I am good enough. And I just want to tell somebody this morning that the Holy Spirit is in you and you are good enough. I don't know what you mess up on this week, whatever you mess up on. I want you to, I want you to go into Romans seven, because when God, when the, when Jesus spoke this to me, I never noticed that in the Bible, but it, it, there's a scripture in the, in, in, in Romans seven, it says, there is nothing good on the inside of us, nothing good. And I, when I was crying and bawling my eyes out and telling God that there was nothing good in me, God, I didn't know that this scripture was in the Bible. In the Bible, And so go read it for yourself in Romans chapter 7. All right? So if you want to be like God, as we close right now, if you want to be like God and you want to get that glorified body like Jesus did, what should you do? How do you obtain this? It's so, it, it is so easy. God made it so easy for us to be able to come back to him. He said, the only thing you got to do is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know how hard it is for people to believe in Jesus? 
Man, my man, I'm telling you, sometimes you tell people they're like Jesus is some from white people, God, and Jesus is he, he, you know, but you know what the Bible says? Blessed are those who have not seen, yet they have believed. Listen, you gotta under it, it is so easy to believe all as well, because if you if you if you contemplate creation, just think about creation, you gotta believe that there is a God. There is a God, there's no other uh, 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 logical explanation of how the world came into being. There is some kind of being out there. I don't want, no, uh, 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 some people think that there's a God of rain and there's a God of sun and a God. Listen, there's, that's too much confusion for me. I have to believe that there is a creator who knows exactly what he was doing when he created me and he created this entire universe. And so believe that you have sinned and, you are, and your sin have separated you from God. And now you need a way to get back to God. And God sent Jesus in the form of the same kind of flesh that we are so that we can relate to him. That is the reason why Jesus came because all before then God has been relating to humanity, but he has been relating in different ways. If you read the Old Testament, you will see the different ways that God has related to humanity. But he sent Jesus now so that Jesus could identify with us. He, like the Bible says, he was a man of sorrow acquainted with grief. He is acquainted with all the things that we go through. And because there was a penalty that had to be paid, in order to get back to that tree of life in the garden, somebody had to pay it. Man's sin, animal's blood could not pay. It needed a human blood to pay for that sinful thing, that, that sinful act of disobedience. And so Jesus came. God said, listen, I, 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 I've tried. I've, I've sought for a man to make up the gap. I've sought for a man that could stand in the, in, in, in the place of sin, that could take sin unto himself without becoming sin so that he could, he could sanctify the people. But there was nobody there. So I so 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 i had to create one i had to i had to go in the form of flesh in jesus christ so that i could i i could make a way for my precious humanity to get back to me and so i don't know why it's so hard to believe in jesus except that the enemy of your soul he's trying to deceive you he's trying to tell you that this, this didn't happen yes it did and so you, I want you to kind of believe with me right now. Jesus did die on the cross. He did raise, a, raise up on the third day. And, and if you accept what he did as a penalty for your sins, because you all know you're sinners. We are sinners, people. We have been sinning since we were born. But God said, accept what Jesus did as a payment for your sins. And when you accept it, it's like God just lift that burden off of, of sin off of you that you couldn't carry. And so understand that his blood is the limestone in the mixture of that iron ore in the furnace trying to remove the, the, the impurities. It is necessary to cleanse you of sin, to remove the slag so that the pure steel can remain. And so you got to accept, not just accept the blood of Jesus, but you got to accept the gift, which is the seal of God, of the, the, the whole, the promise of God, the Holy Spirit, that when you accept the Holy Spirit, we ask him, when you ask Jesus to come into your heart and you accept him as the Lord and Savior, also ask him, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit, infuse the Holy Spirit in my spirit so that I can begin to live out of my spirit instead of out of my flesh. And so once the carbon of the Holy Spirit is introduced into the iron ore, it completely changes and it becomes a stronger metal, now being able to withstand many trials and tribulation without losing faith in God. Come on, people. You got to be able to persevere. You got to be able to endure to the end because the Bible says the saved ones endure to the end. Live according to the spirit. Be led by the spirit. Now that you ask Jesus to come into your heart, he cleanse you from your sins. Live as he fill you with the Holy Spirit. And this is why, as I close, the Holy Spirit is putting that, 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 that expectation in our, in our spirit this morning to wait pa patiently, to wait expectantly for the promise of being adopted into the kingdom of God as, as sons and daughters of God. There, we are still in our intermediate stage. 
But this morning, God is saying, come on deeper. Come on deeper. Come on deeper. Come on. Come on. You know, you, you got to allow the impurities in your life to be burned out of you. You got to allow yourself to go. Don't ask God, why do I go through trials? Well, you can ask God that, but you got to ask him in a way that's saying, God, I just need understanding. Don't feel like you're entitled to not go through trials because the only day that you're not going to go through trials is the day when you receive that sanctified, glorified body and you're now free from this robe of flesh. But until then, until then, you got to endure. You got to persevere to the end. Amen. Glory to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for your word that has gone forth, Lord God. Oh, God, encouraging us, Lord God, to become flames of fire for you, Lord God. Father, every person under the sound of my voice today, I pray, God, that you would turn them into your flames of fire, Lord God. I pray, God, that when they go through their furnace of tribulation and trials in this earth, Lord God, they will not question why, but they will understand that you are working in them and through them, Lord God, and you're, you're transforming them into a flame of living fire, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, open up the, and their understanding, open the eyes, their eyes in the spirit, God, so that they can see what it is that you are doing in this season, Lord God, and come and give glory and honor to your name, Lord God. Give them, give them the grace of perseverance, the grace of endurance, Lord God, so that they will keep the faith to the end, to that very day, Lord God, when the last trumpet will sound, Lord God, and the dead in Christ will rise first, Lord God, and God, so they will be caught up to meet you in the air, Lord God, and so they will be forever changed, forever transformed into your image in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I know if you're listening and you said, I'm not giving my heart to the, I've not given my heart to the Lord, and I don't know how to become the flame of fire. I know I've given you so much, and so sometimes it's hard to pick it out. But go back and listen to this message. And I want you to do something else. I want you to say this little prayer with me. Because see, the whole, thing, the whole reason why I do this is so that somebody may hear the true gospel. I want you to hear the true gospel. I want you to get the pathway, the pathway to eternity. And so if that's you this morning and you have never given your life to the Lord, it is so simple. I want you to say this simple prayer with me and I want you to believe it with all of your heart. Are you ready? Let's do it. Heavenly Father, I believe I, 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 that I see that I am a sinner. I have sinned. I have done things that, that, that are wrong in your sight. And I come to confess my faults. I come to repent of them, Lord. And I ask you, Lord, to come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Be my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me for those sins that I've committed and help me to live for you. I accept the blood of Jesus Christ as the payment for my sins. I believe that he died on the cross. And I believe that he rose on the third day. And I believe that he ascended to heaven on high. And he is at the right hand of the Father making petitions for me. And so I accept, I accept, I accept fully, Lord, the gift of salvation today. Because I can see that there is no other way. And so, Lord, I ask you to fill me with the Holy Spirit and transform me into that image. Make me a flame of fire today in Jesus' name. Amen. And so I believe that if you pray that simple prayer, God, the Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit has entered your heart. And there's going to be some tremendous change in your life in the, in the next few days, in the next few weeks. Because it, 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 it happens just like that. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Woo, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know you want to be a son and you want to be a daughter of God. But it seemed like there's so many thorns and thistles that are standing in your way. But I come today to tell you that it is so simple. It is so easy to become a son and a daughter of God. Just believe. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's okay. It's okay. For you who I see you behind the screen crying. I see you being touched by the Holy Spirit. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. I don't know if you're watching this on the live or you're watching it on the replay. 
but the Holy Spirit is touching you right now. I see somebody, I see a, a female person on, on, the back, on, 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 on the back side of my screen here, touching the Holy Spirit and being touched by God. So Holy Spirit, touch your daughter. Touch your daughter, Holy Spirit. Speak softly to them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Make them flames of fire, Lord. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. So we come to another part in our service this morning. I pray that um, you're being blessed by these messages. And I pray that, um, you know, uh, you would help us to help other people to be able to do this in a wider scale and to bring this to other people. So Without further ado, I just encourage you to give an offering, give a tithe. If this is the place that you meet every Sunday with us, um, give a tithe. The Lord did say, bring a tithe into the storehouse and prove me now here with, says the Lord of hosts. If I would not open up the windows of heaven for you and pour you out a blessing. And the great thing about that is he rebukes the devourer for your sake. So give a tithe, give an offering, give something. Don't come before God empty-handed. Give God something today. Amen. All right. God bless you.